As a young man, I arrived at Southampton by boat uh, to Waterloo as an immigrant. I have lived the whole life of immigration. My father was from St. Vincent, Trinidad they headed for. My grandfather, Sierra James Barbados. So I've always been from leaving Africa to the Caribbean, back to England, from the different Caribbean islands. I have always carried a journey of being an immigrant. And I'll tell you the strength of it. We are not to be trapped in nationalism. Prince Harry finding it all very funny. Yeah. I pay no attention to UKIP. I've got a quotation here uh, about the impact of immigration on the existing population. For reasons which they could not comprehend, the indigenous population found themselves made strangers in their own country, their wives unable to obtain hospital beds, in childbirth, their children unable to obtain school places, their homes and neighbourhoods changed beyond recognition. I mean, you'd agree with that, would you? I, in a lot of England, that's true. And you know where that's from, don't you? I don't know. Enoch Powell's Rivers of Blood speech. Is it? And then Enoch Powell, he represented all that reactionary nonsense about racial inferiority. I never accepted that for half a minute. I want Farage to know it's going to be a fight till the finish. Um, CLR James, his mother, and my grandmother were sisters. Um, I, I knew he traveled through the Vanguard Party, Trotskyism to the Vanguard Party. He's a wonderful historian. And Marx and Lenin would not have been at all surprised a solidarity, that's what they were waiting for. That was their perspective, that the working class would move like some earthquake, some tempest, some tremendous reversal of the existing system, which would project the working class to the head of society, and things would begin to happen for the socialist society. They asked Marx, what will the working class do? And his reply was magnificent. He says the workers will do what they have to do, that's all. And solidarity is the socialist construction against these totalitarians. And he believes that the mass movement cannot be guided by those who know, and you're taking down the ignoramuses who don't know. And he finished with that theoretically and practically, and I joined him beautifully. I'm against it and I will continue to be. And I believe that sentiment... That entry is mass from below, not guided by Vanguard Party people from the front. He was clear about that, and then he wrote again about a small organization. And you make some interventions, you cannot lead anybody anymore. distinction was important uh, that it was an uprising that all through Egypt it was happening all over the world that uprising is taking place all through Latin America all through Africa and I have grandchildren who I told when they were young they stop and search don't put up with it at all. Mm -hmm. the, that generation are not putting up with it under any circumstance. <laughs> in Brixton, when I was living in Brixton, the first mass uprising took place in Brixton when the police uh, called Operation Swamp. They swamped the place and it built up. No journalist knew enough about the citizenry of Brixton. White people knew something was happening there. And I wrote it and I said, this is going to explode. Uh, the greatest enemy of blacks is the Daily Mail. 
I have never forgotten them. They killed uh, 13 young blacks at a party. We called a demonstration, the parents and everybody. And they sent me to go from Liverpool to mobilize people to bring them on the streets. The slogan was 13 dead and nothing said. 20,000 people on a Tuesday morning. They hadn't seen anything like that before. And I reached the Hyde Park. And um, they said to me, uh, the Evening Standard, Mr. How, what do you think of it all? I said it was a fine day. I didn't want to boast. They couldn't believe 20,000 people would come. And then they got a policeman, not from the demonstration, from the archives, with blood coming down his head. It was to be said, well, this demonstration. And St. Jacques' house says it was a good day. And all of us have met the British state in the maneuver and the manipulation to deny us rights. Well, I read the Daily Mail. That is the Conservative Party publication. The Labour Party can't even get one because it shifts around. And the mangrove trial, I spent, for 10 years I was never let, not on bail because it was seen as a kind of upstart fellow. My present wife, we were publishing and writing. C.L.R. James was my great uncle. And they could not believe. I said, remember every moment, even going into a shop to buy something, they thought that all of us came here begging something. The black community, not only in Notting Hill, but all over this country, has a certain experience with the police. And that experience, in my terms, is one which could be easily described as brutal, harassing, and generally repressive. And that on the 9th of August 1970, the Action Committee in Defense of the Mangrove Restaurant, which is a Western London restaurant in Notting Hill, called the demonstration because that restaurant had been consistently harassed by the police. There were three raids on the restaurant, ostensibly for drugs, nothing was found. And so the community responded with the demonstration. Part of getting immigrants to work for less money than they used to, wanting them with a background of slavery to bow their heads. And I, I grew up with that. I came here 52 years ago. Now I'm 71. And what they did not know, I don't know how they were that or not. We will not put up with it at all. We will enter modern society on the basis of absolute equality, or we would not enter at all. Otherwise, this is the last great battle of the West. We have nothing in our head to make us feel inferior. And those who looked at us from the pulpit of prime minister and government ministers, they really believed we would have accepted it. And we didn't. And we never will. So all the newspapers, to hell with it. Whatever you see on television, don't believe that. Papa is speaking the truth. It has been for some time now that black people have been caught up in complaining to police about police, yeah. complaining to magistrates about magistrates, <laughs> complaining to judges about judges, <laughs> complaining to politicians about politicians. We have become the own shapers of our destiny as from today. The precedents have been set. Young kids have committed the greatest revolutionary action that has been known in this country for some time. They walked into a police station and took it over. But the objective must be clear. The objective was to free their brothers. What our objective is today, what is going to continue to be, is a concerted, determined attempt to prevent any infringement on our rights. Many rivers to cross and we couldn't seem to find my our way over. Wandering I am lost 
as I travel along the wide cliffs of Dover. Left-wing people talk about Marxism, Leninism, it's Bob Marley, it's Jimmy Cliff. And I went to Spain and I was giving a lecture in Madrid. Spain has what may be called an, an, an anarchist tradition. First time I saw a possibility of a new governance that transcended parliamentary democracy. They started to talk about assemblies of the people to transcend trade unions and let the decision be made for the governance by the working class. That's where I belong. Spain has got it. And to make the leap from parliamentary democracy. And I stood there and I listened to them. I said, what? I've never, I heard this before. I have certain ideas about that before. But it was complete and clean. There's only episodal moments. Episode. We have to explain to them. And if you activate, not to join you, but you to join them with your uh, perception of the new society.